Episode 13, Speaking to Darkness. With everyone gone, Pink is now alone and vulnerable. What does Sprex have in store for her next? Pink laid, settled at the bottom of the tank. She sighs to herself. <sighs> Rissa sits visibly on the edge of the tank, paddling her feet in the water. She watches Pink, soaking in the sadness coming from her. <laughs> you really should have kept a better eye on your map. Pink feels the sting, but tries to ignore her. She swims around into the castle. She casts the Infinity Ward, and she keeps Rissa from porting out. Pink swims back to the open water. She eyes Rissa and slips in and out of the coral in the tank. You can't ignore me. I can try. <laughs> Aislinn can hear her crying internally. She stands at attention at the shepherd glass drones on about caution and care for the bonded charge. Mistra is assigned to be the big brother to Aislinn. He nudges him and tilts his head curiously. Aislinn corrects his face and shakes back his mind to what's at hand. Pink notices Kevin sitting quietly in the empty club. He drinks and stares in the tank, making notes. Jack comes by and sets another drink on the table. He goes around the back of the stage and climbs up the ladder, shaking food for Pink. She comes to the top. What is Kevin doing? He just wanted to be here to work. I figured it wouldn't hurt. So what's happening? Who's up tonight? Thelma Nestle is coming tonight. Oh, she's good. You should have a full house. Can I get you anything? I could use a smoke. Jack lights one and then turns it so she can smoke it. She takes a hit. Gray bubbles pour out of the gills and pop leaving a layer of smoke on the surface. He waits for her to finish and puts it out in the ashtray on the table at the bottom of the ladder. If that's all you need, I'm going back to paperwork. Thanks, Jack. Pink eyes Rissa. Why don't you come in for a talk, Rissa? She slips back into the water, changing shape into a black and red beta fish. Pink swims into her castle. Rissa swims right after her. <laughs> Pink looks over and laughs at her vanity. She casts Bubble, keeping them close together. I always wondered why someone with so much power and ability isn't in charge. You should be on the Council for Lords of Chaos, but you aren't. I wonder why. Rissa ponders the question. Hmm. Well, Sprex is much more powerful than I am. I don't see a way to beat him. Hmm. It's too bad. He's having so much fun abusing you, watching you fail, leaving you hungry. Rissa pouts a little bit. In fact, he gets the lion's share of the pain and suffering. He doesn't even follow the rules he places on you. One set of rules for him, another for you. That hardly seems fair. Pink goes to the mouthpiece of the tall hookah that's half in and half out of the water, and she takes a smoke. I mean, you've been at this way longer than I have, and what do you get? Scraps. His hoof on your neck. Lady, you should be queen of the damned at this point. Yes. <sighs> I should be. <sighs> you know Sprex very well, I'm told. I do. We spent many years chasing each other around the seas when he was a pirate. Wonder why he didn't kill you before now. You know, I don't think he really wants me dead. Don't you? Think of it this way. He's had me in his hands more than once, and I'm not nearly powerful enough to beat him. He could have done it at any time, you know. Hmm. <laughs> You're right. Why do you think he keeps from killing me outright? He does like you to suffer. <laughs> and it is particularly delicious. Hmm, <laughs> that's true. What if he keeps me alive because I challenge him? Doesn't he know you'll only get stronger? Maybe. That's what he's banking on. He claims to want me as a partner. He needs me on Team Chaos. Maybe he's thinking of replacing you. Has that ever occurred to you? Do you think you'll ever come to Chaos? I don't know. It's always a possibility, I suppose. But if I become more powerful, I would also be a worthy opponent. I mean, look at how well I've done so far. <laughs> yes, you are resilient. Rissa considers this for a moment. Her eyes flash red with fire. 
Pink exhales the smoke into the bubble, hotboxing both of them. As the fog obscures the view, Rissa feels more anxious. I could just eat you, you know. Send you back to the boss man for him to laugh at you again. She tries to pour it out but realizes that she's warded in. Smoke swirls in the bubble as Pink moves. I'd like to give you something instead. Pink hovers over Rissa in the bubble, her fin touching her. She collects the love and the power of all the time with Tex and pours it into her mind. The sheer joy of it makes Rissa itchy and uncomfortable. <laughs> she twitches away from Pink. The feeling is foreign and very overwhelming. She's having a real hard time. Intense, huh? Make it go away. I promise I'll leave you alone. She expects mercy. Pink ups the feelings, magnifying bliss on top of bliss. Rissa cries out in pain. They both know she's trapped. Pink searches Rissa's feelings. She's confused and frustrated. She's angry. She probes her motives and her understanding. Rissa's beautiful black and red tail twitches. Some of her scales begin to turn a brighter red, almost flaming up. Pink half wants to see if the amount of love she's feeling for Tex will make her explode. Pink releases the bubble, and they're loose in the water inside the castle. Rissa bolts out in the open tank as fast as her fins can carry her. Pink twitches like lightning out of the tank and snaps Rissa up. Now maybe a fish can get some space. Rissa rematerializes in the hells. Sprex looks unsurprised. I see you let it deport you. The noise at the bar is at its peak. She glares at him, remembering all of what Pink said. <sighs> Rissa stomps her foot down and ports away. Sprex laughs to himself. <laughs> Aislinn and Mistra sit in the square after their training class. So, what were you making a face about during orientation? I could feel intense sadness. I think it was from Pink. And then later some satisfaction, like it had lifted. Ah, Pink is sorting her feelings, I suspect. She's been sent away to deal with them. So, got any questions for me, Ace? I've been with Pink a year now. How is this the first I'm hearing of this bonding? You see, it's supposed to be an organic thing, wrought from care. My guess is, you just never felt connected to Pink before now. It's also something she can't initiate. It has to come from a free offer of oneself. I didn't offer anything. I just showed compassion. Exactly. Can she hear every thought I have now? I feel like I don't have any privacy. I don't understand the concept. You know, privacy? Where my thoughts are my own? As a first-gen angel, I've never had it. I don't really see the point. You were never human? No. What thoughts would you have that you can't share? What are you hiding? Human thoughts, I guess. <laughs> no will. No privacy. And now I'm bonded to someone without feeling like I had a choice because I didn't know that hugging it would initiate it. What benefit is this to me? You know how you can only port to places you have coordinates for or are familiar with? Sure. Now, you don't need that to get to wherever she is. You hone in on her. It also stops you from being warded out because you sort of occupy the same space in a way. Like the way a Venn diagram overlaps. Can I turn it off? Or at least turn it down? Uh, you'll get to a point where you can tell when she needs you. The normal rise and fall of her internal song will become background. But, as a person with experience, she can limit what you hear. You will be able to as well, with practice. What else is it good for? Well, for starters, battle coordination will be much easier. It will increase your spell abilities. Her connection adds power to yours. For example, say you cast Healing Hands. Because of your connection, it will be stronger and restore more health at a time. Okay. Okay. As a consequence, you also add angelic might to her already powerful abilities, boosting her damage and protection as well. Since you can't use the power effectively yet, she can use your latent abilities as a booster, like a battery, and you'll level faster and gain more abilities because you share a power pool. 
Have you thought about your elemental power yet? You should be about ready to choose one, yes? I should ask Pink what she thinks. In the tank, Pink hears her name and perks up. Aislinn can feel the connection open between them. Okay, let's practice something since you are going to reach out to her. Take a deep breath. Imagine you're standing in front of her talking. Now ask her what you want to know. Aislinn takes a deep breath and visualizes Pink near him. He can feel the connection more strongly than before. There you go. Pour your will into it. Pink, what element do you think would complement your abilities most? Let's go with lightning. I think you'll feel comfortable with it. You can always add elements later. Aislinn begins to glow more brightly. I see you have the hang of it now. What did she say? Let's go with lightning. Mistress slaps his thigh and then stands uh, up. Let's go get you checked in and see how your levels look. They both walk to the nearest check-in point. Portia stands over Texas Tube, checking his vitals. He's nearly ready to wake up. She looks over to the list of shepherds and chooses Elvis for his guide. Elvis smiles down at Tex, taking the shape of his father. Tex's dreaming materializes the house around them, the windows white with the glare of snow. Elvis tousles his hair, gently coaxing Tex awake. Come on, sleepyhead. Wake up. Huh? Is it morning? Did Santa come? Yeah, champ. He came. Oh, boy! He whips off the covers and goes into overdrive, galloping around excitedly. He grabs a stuffed fish pillow off the bed in his room and races down the stairs. Elvis follows him out. There's a flash of light, and Tex is gone. Pink swallows as her connection severs. Aislin puts his hand on the sensor in front of the library. Aislin Donovan, Class 1 Escort, bonded to Helga Holtzfather. New abilities unlocked. 50% increase in the healing. Lightning element unlocked. Lightning ball. Lightning spread. Headshot. Wing shield now takes more damage. Use these new abilities in tandem with your bondage abilities. Aislin. You have an appointment at the range for practice in 15 minutes. He jerks his hand away. I'll never get used to that. Did you forget you're in a military class? Mistress shakes his head. Aislinn shrugs. And they walk to the range. Pink sits behind the desk in Jack's office sorting papers, signing things and filling them out. Jack catches her mid-motion. You okay? I guess. Why? You are in here. The funeral's today, Jack. And look at this mess. How does it get like this? Okay, settle down, boss. Listen, I came to tell you that Kevin is here. Okay, get me a whiskey sour or two and whatever he likes. He nods. Pink walks around the corner to her dressing room. Sure enough, Kevin's there fumbling with some papers. Pink closes the door quietly as to not disturb him. She sits down and straightens her chocolate-colored wool skirt. Kevin? Kevin looks up his pencil hanging out of his mouth. He dumps the papers on the table and then spits out the pencil. Hello. Uh, so you ready to finish the story? It's nice to see you too, Kevin. How have you been? Uh, sorry, I I'm just anxious to hear how it goes. Where was I? She was tattooing you, and the that demon lady was whipping things up between you. Jack comes into the room and sets down a tray of drinks. He winks and clicks his tongue. Okay, so one day I noticed a particular man came into the shop. He had on a black cloak and a large-brimmed hat. Brenna gave Helga a knowing glance. He was looking for witches. Helga swept primly around the counter where he stood. She waited patiently, eyes down. <clears throat> yes, I would like to know if the cream is ready that I came in for several days ago. Helga produced a small jar. The money dropped down the counter. He stood very still for a moment, watching Brenna crush herbs. He leaned over the counter into Helga's space and whispered in her ear, I have reason to believe that you are being held prisoner here by a witch. He leaned back and cut his eyes at Brenna. Helga wrapped up his purchase in paper and tied it up with a string. Here you are, sir. Twice a day as discussed. Reverend Waverly hadn't taken his eyes off of Brenna the whole time. Rissa clung to the reverend, cooing and whispering. 
Helga screwed up her face as she felt Rissa's presence leave the building with him. Aislinn and Mistra fly around the range, Mistra dodging lightning balls and Aislinn dodging rocks. Range time is up. Please collect your receipt. The angels make noises like kids having to stop playing for dinner. Aislinn places his hands on the scanner and collects the receipt. Aislinn, Sin has requested your presence at Sinister Suites. They walk through the gurgling fountains on their way to Sin's. A uniformed man walks by, causing Aislinn to watch him the whole time as he passes. Could it be? Was it possible? Hold on a second, mister. I'll be right back. He salutes him. Sir? The uniformed man, gray at the temple, smiles and salutes back. They shake hands warmly. At ease, soldier. Sir Donovan, how have you been? You were the first person I've met from the old life. Not surprised. There's so many here and they do keep us pretty busy. How are you adjusting? Aislinn rubs the back of his neck. I'm okay. I just feel like I'm making a lot of mistakes, and the cost has been high. Hey, why don't you come meet me sometime and we can talk about it. I know the first runs don't always get it. Yeah, okay. I have to go, but let's catch up soon, sir. Sure thing. Hey, it's just damn here. Aislinn. They nod and part ways. Aislinn goes back to Sins. Oh, Isla, Isra, come in. He sits down at the table. Traffic is pretty light, and it's pretty quiet. What can I get you? The usual. Can you, uh, bring me that frozen thing you made with the chocolate swirl? No. So, Captain Anderson, huh? Yeah, he was a good commander. I saw plenty of good men get killed by bad leadership. He cared about his troops. He's a good man. I like him. Sin brings back a tray with a slice of cake, black coffee with two sugars for Aislinn, and a swirly frozen drink for Mistra. Sin sits down. So, what did you need? I wanted you to make a delivery for me. Sure. Who's it for? For the pink. Aislinn nods. Suddenly there's an explosion in the direction of Otto's. When they come in his work, the table's on fire. The sprinklers have gone off and he's standing there under the cover of his wings. Water drips as he stares mournfully out frustrated. I will never get this formula right. Are you sure there isn't some other way? He flings the wrench and picks up his tea. It's cold and watered down by the sprinklers. He smashes the cup and storms out. Pinky stands in the shade of the large oak in the middle of the cemetery. The priest mumbles some words and it's over. Other than Pink herself, the priest, Dexter, Texas driver, no one else came. Dexter touched her gently and guided her back to the car. Just as they were about to pull away, Pink spots Rissa in the shadows under a black umbrella. Rissa blows her a kiss, and Pink grumbles to herself. You all right, Pink? I just remembered I need to pay an old friend a visit soon. There was quiet until he pulled up to the club. She got out and turned back to look at him once more. You need anything, you call me. He drove away. Pink goes into the club and looks at Jack. She looks left, right, and then she disappears into the tank. Pink has planted seeds of doubt in Ress's mind. Aislinn has picked up some new skills and Tex has crossed over. Stay tuned for the next exciting adventure of Chasing Tales. Episode 14, Back to Work. 